Hi, I'm Dr. Ratna Maheshwari, Pediatric Orthopedic Surgeon. Here at Enable, we discuss all topics related to bone, joint and muscle health in growing children. Congratulations! The love of your life is finally in your arms. But parenting comes with a lot of doubts and a lot of responsibilities but without a reference manual. Did you know that looseness of the hip is one of the most common abnormalities in a newborn baby? Yes, one in six babies are born with loose or clicky hips. While this looseness can correct over time, the way you swaddle, carry or wear your baby can have long lasting implications on the hip joint development. Incorrect techniques can result into a condition which is known as DDH or developmental hip dysplasia. It's a little known but a very common condition, preventable and easily treatable if caught in time and it carries the potential for lifelong disability. Proper swaddling is vital to keep the hip joint healthy and aid in its development. The purpose of this video is to show you how to swaddle your baby in a healthy hip way. So the hip joint is a ball and socket joint. The ball is the femoral head which sits atop the thigh bone and the socket is the acetabulum which is a part of the bone called pelvis. So this smooth ball or head sits in a smooth cup called the acetabulum like an egg in an egg cup and they are held together by muscle, ligaments and capsule. While I will be discussing hip dysplasia in greater details in a future video, in brief, DDH or developmental hip dysplasia is a condition where the ball and socket fail to develop correctly. As a child grows, the ball and the socket exert mutual pressure on each other, therefore forming a snugly fitting joint. In dysplasia, they do not fit snugly with each other. It is a silent condition, not painful in the early years, therefore difficult to detect. It may be present at birth or develop later in infancy. It is one of the leading causes for early arthritis of hip in adulthood. So this is the socket which is a part of the bone called the pelvis bone and this is the ball which sits on top of the thigh bone and together they form the hip joint. So DDH can be a spectrum from mild to severe. Sometimes the ball may sublux in and out, in and out of the socket and this is known as a subluxatable hip. Sometimes the socket itself may be shallow and very vertical and this condition is known as acetabular dysplasia. Sometimes the ball may dislocate and stay outside the socket and this is known as a dislocated hip. If you notice a newborn's resting leg position, you will notice that babies love to bend their legs up and move. In fact, this is for a very good reason. Hip joint development requires movement. The idea of swaddling is to have a little tightness around the baby so that they feel secure. The correct way to do so is for the arms, not for the leg. Because if you keep the legs straight in a very tight position while swaddling, it can add abnormal stresses and cause loose, immature hips to go upwards and away from the socket wall. This is crucial, especially in the first three months of life, where there is a high degree of looseness around the joint and also because the bones are a soft cartilage and very moldable. Studies from the populations of Canadian First Nations, Navajo American Indians, Japan and Turkey have shown that swaddling tightly can cause the hip joints to dislocate. In fact, in Japan, a national program was implemented to teach just two things. One, correct swaddling and two, awareness to avoid prolonged hip and knee leg straight position, especially in the early newborn period. This brought down the rate of DDH from 3.5% to less than 0.2%. Navajo American Indian tribe which carried their babies along on a cradle board in an extremely tight leg straight position had a 33% rate of dislocation. 
This decreased dramatically once diapers were introduced and the legs were spread apart a little. The baby should be wrapped in such a way that the legs are allowed to bend up and outwards. This aids in natural and proper development of the hip joint. Do not wrap the baby's leg tightly together in a straight leg position. So take one edge of the swaddle cloth and fold it like a triangle so that you have a straight edge. Now place the baby on top of the swaddle cloth so that the straight edge is at the level of shoulder. Place one arm down, fold the cloth over the arm and the chest and tuck it under the opposite side. Place the other arm down and fold the cloth over the arm and the chest and tuck it under the opposite side. Now make sure there is enough space for the legs to move and that the legs can bend up and out. After that, you can either twist the bottom half loosely and gently and place it under the baby or you can fold and place it over or under the baby. Humans are a parent clinging species similar to other primates. Indigenous people traditionally know how to carry a baby correctly. The M position is a natural clinging position for infants. It is also known as a spread squat or jockey position. Cultures where baby wearing is common in this jockey position have a low rate of hip dislocation. Baby wearing is becoming increasingly popular given the practical and psychological benefits. Positioning therefore becomes vitally important, especially when wearing the baby for long periods of time. So what is this M position? Thighs are spread around the torso or back, approximately around 40 to 55 degrees at each hip. Hips are bent so that the knee is above the buttock level. That is around a 90 to 110 degree bend upwards. Thigh support when used in a carrier extends to the knee. In this position, the ball is pressed evenly in the socket. Carriers where the thigh support doesn't extend to the knee and the legs are allowed to dangle can actually contribute to hip dysplasia and its use must be avoided. Therefore, always pick the carrier with support extending to the knee. Inward facing carriers are biomechanically more ergonomical for the adult carrying the child and also allows for infant to grab onto the caregiver's torso so they are healthier for hip development, especially in the first year of life. So there's a lot more left to be discussed on the topic of hip dysplasia and we will do so in future videos. I hope this video reaches all new parents. Together, let's make hip dysplasia history.